Hi guys, I'm just making this video because um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the video I added yesterday which was a story from the BBC Science and Environment um, on the news website and it was a story about geoengineering and um, just one of the articles was saying that the 72% um, of the public have agreed to geoengineering. I'm just going to quickly explain to you what geoengineering is. Now geoengineering is a way of making the sun stop shining on earth and to reflect it away from earth. That's what geoengineering is. And they're saying they're doing this because it's going to defeat global warming. And the thing is, global warming, no such thing. You know, we've always had changes in weather. It's perfectly normal. It's not for man to decide when the sun shines and when it doesn't. And at the moment, here, it's um, a couple of weeks now, a few days until, until June. We're supposed to be coming into summertime. And um, the sky out there, total blanket white of clouds. Haven't seen any sunshine all day. And the time now is half past four in the afternoon. Haven't seen a ray of sunshine. It's just been totally white out there. Um, and it's, you know, it's bright, but there's no sun. I'm going to quickly show you what I mean. That is what the sky has been like all day. Just like that. Not a single bit of sun. It's totally white. Look. I'm going to zoom in. Nothing. No blue. Just white. That is a total whiteout. And it's been like that all day. Okay. So like I said, it's coming up for June and it doesn't look like we're going to have any summer or any sunshine. And this story has just made me really angry because for years now they have been calling people who have noticed spraying going on. They've been calling us conspiracy theorists, they've been calling us nuts, um, people have been sacked from their workplaces because they've been looking into this. Um, People have been, you know, ostracised by their friends, their family, their work friends, because everyone has been just assuming they're a nutcase because it's out in the mainstream media and they've made it look like anyone that's noticed this is an absolute freak. So, and there's a word going around, chemtard. You know, I want to say to all you people who put us down for noticing something, we saw a plane spraying and it stayed, we noticed it, and you all put us down. Mainstream media called us nuts you know and everybody went with that everyone that just listens and just goes along went with that and they too thought that we were nuts and at the same time you've got stories on the BBC News website at the same time you've got stories on the BBC News website explaining to you what geoengineering does and how much it's cutting the Sun away from Earth and it was this picture here that totally 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 to be honest pissed me off right so to all you people who think that those who are noticing the planes doing this this is number two yeah atmospheric atmospheric aerosols yeah that means they've got planes flying at a certain altitude lower than where a contrail would form which is what we have all been saying and these planes are spraying out chemicals which are then making the sun bounce off them and go back into space. So they've even got in the picture here, you know the haze that we see? Look at this. There's the haze. That's where they're spraying. This is a chemtrail. This is aerosol spraying. For all of you who say that it's not happening, this is a picture of geoengineering. All right? They say they're not doing this project, but they are because we see them on a daily basis. There is no sun in the sky, so it's obviously all being reflected away by all this shit that they're putting into our sky. Right? And what's really wound me up about this, in the actual story itself, where they're showing this picture, I've printed it, it's the whole story. Um, stratospheric aerosols seem to offer the most effect for the least investment. So it's the cheapest way to, cut the, to block the sun. Um, and it seems to offer the most effect. Well, it's going to, because if you put a blanket of crap across the sky and it's thick enough, you're not going to see the sun. So it's working. Okay, so stratospheric aerosols seem to offer the most effect for the least investment and could be deployed soon. 
People, it's been deployed now. If you see a plane leaving a trail and it's flying lower than contrails are supposed to form, it's, it is a chemtrail. It's aerosol spraying. They're doing it so that the sun will reflect off whatever shit they're spraying out in the sky. So I'll start this again. Sorry, this has made me really angry. And it's proof for us too. But it also makes me angry that they've put us down and called us nuts for so long. And at the same time, it's hidden in plain sight on their website. Right? So stratospheric aerosols seem to offer the most effect for the least investment and could be deployed soon but present an unknown risk to the environment, environment. So they themselves do not know what's going to happen to people and the environment where they're spraying all these metals into the air. And you know when people say they're finding metal in their water, when people say they're finding metal in their blood, when people are getting ill, okay, and their kidneys and their livers are suffering because you're having to um, work so much metal in your body, your liver and your kidney, they're working hard, okay, they're working harder than they usually do, because they're trying to get rid of all this, these toxins in your body, which are coming out of the planes, because they need a certain element to make sure that it goes back up into the sky, so the stuff that they're spraying is going to be metal, it's got to be some sort of metallic substance for it to have the light shine back off it. And if you check it, look how big the sky is, it's a lot of stuff they're having to spray. So when you see that haze all over the sky and there's no blue, it's aerosol spraying and it's come out of a plane. Right? And I'm just loving the fact that I found that and I can show you that picture of geoengineering being explained on the BBC News website for science and environment. And they're telling you that 72% of the public have said it's okay to do this in the UK, the US and Canada. Did they ask you if they could do it? Are you missing the sun in England this May? We haven't had any at all. We had about a week longer than that of just rain. Sometimes when there's heavy chemtrailing, there is rain. And then you don't want to go out your house and you don't want to get wet with the rain because you don't know what the hell is coming down onto you. Um, so yeah, this is just... I think this is really good for us, the activists that have been fighting against this. And it's blatant proof that it is taking place. And it has been taking place for a long time. Right? And I've also got... I did write to my MP. And I got a reply back. It's just pathetic, to be honest. Um, it got sent to DEFRA. My MP didn't even look into it. He just sent my, my letter straight to DEFRA. Uh, I'll just read a bit to you. I'm sorry to hear that Miss Noyes' niece is having breathing problems. However, this will not be because of chemtrails. Let me reiterate that DFT has no evidence in the UK involving the release of aerosols from aircraft. I'll repeat that line. There is no evidence in the UK involving the release of aerosols from aircraft. All right. There are a number of theories about this subject on the web, but the Q&A fact sheet we produce sets out the known scientific knowledge in this area. So they're trying to tell me there is no knowledge of anything to do with aerosol spray. That is aerosol spraying. That is geoengineering. And if the department, if DEFRA doesn't know about it, then it's just pathetic. Talk about there's no communication between departments or if they need to know, they, they need to know. But it's pathetic. Um, with regard to the parliamentary report on the regulation of geoengineering, science and Techn technology committee, the report describes geoengineering as activities specifically and deliberately designed to affect a change in the global climate with the aim of minimising or reversing climate change. The committee considers that weather modification techniques should not be considered as geoengineering has no long-term effect on the climate. So they're trying to say it has no long-term effect on the climate. Well, it does, because we haven't seen the sun, and it's nearly June, it's supposed to be summertime, and I know sometimes we have crappy summers, but the sun shines, and the sun is shining, but it hasn't been for the last few days, and there's been no sun at all. So, anyone feeling a bit down, a bit tired, a bit sleepy, a bit dozy, you've got no vitamin D in your, in your system, you need to go and get some vitamins and put those in you, so we can all stand and fight this crap. Right, so now I did recently write to the West Hertfordshire Hospital NHS and I sent them a freedom of information request and I asked them if they could send me um, information on people who had been admitted 
due to breathing difficulties and who had had to go to casualty or in straight into um, ICU. And I did get a response back for them, which was really good. Um, so they've given me, what they've sent me is an attachment, which I'll, I'll send you a copy. If, you, if anyone wants to see this, I'll, I'll send a copy. What they sent me was an attachment. And if you can see there, I'll read what it says as well. Patients admitted to the trust since January 2008 to date on a month-by-month -month basis where respiratory problems and in brackets shortness of breath and other abnormalities of breathing were identified as the primary diagnosis. So this, these st stats go back to, to um, 2008. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. So if we look at this. So in January 2008, 22 people were admitted to hospital because they couldn't breathe. So if we look down in January 2009, it was 12. In January 2010, it was 35. January 2011, it was 67. And in January 2012, 95 people were admitted to hospital because they couldn't breathe or they had to go straight to casualty or ICU. So I'll say that again. So 2008, you had 22. And in 2012, you have 95. Let's have a look at February. In February 2008, you had 15. February 09, 18. February 2010, 48. February 2011, 64. And February 2012, 96. So we've gone from 15 in 2008 to 96 in 2012. Now March is the worst here. In March 2008 you had 19 people were admitted because they couldn't breathe with difficulties, they had respiratory problems. In March 2009 we had 21. In March 2010, 42. In March 2011 it went up to 93 people couldn't breathe and had to be admitted to casualty or ICU. And in March 2012, 109 people couldn't breathe and had to be admitted to hospital. They were taken by ambulance or whatever. They were in casualty or ICU and they had respiratory problems. So that's just sick. All right, let's go later on in the year because we know during the summer they spray a lot. It's like um, August, September, October. There's a lot of spraying going on. So in August 2008, we had 21 people admitted to hospital. 2009 we had 29 people, in August 2010 there was 53, um, August 2011 we had 78. This is just nuts people. Let's look at April, month's just gone. April 2008 we had 25 people admitted to hospital because they couldn't breathe. In April 2009 we had 27, in April 2010 there was 37. April 2011, 79, and April this year, and the stats which I received a few weeks ago, it's already 52, so it's already looking like it's going to be even worse. Um, let's check October, if I haven't already. October 08, 19. October 09, 58. October 2010, 74. October 2011, 127 people were admitted because they couldn't breathe. So 08 in October was 19, so we've gone from 19 people, right, to 127 people being admitted into hospital because they can't breathe, they've got heart respiratory problems, and I think, I know this has got a lot to do with the shit that they're spraying, because if you check it, the stuff that they're having to put in the air to, to, to make the sun, the solar radiation they're trying to reflect away. The stuff that they're having to put into these planes, right, to spray out, they're going to be like metallic stuff. It's going to have to be stuff that's reflective. Now this kind of shit, right, is not supposed to be in the human body. It's not supposed to be going in our water. It's not supposed to be going in our blood. It's not supposed to be absorbed by us. We're getting lack of vitamin D whilst also on top of that, we're getting shit on our chests. Have you wondered why you constantly get a cold and it goes and it comes back and it goes and it comes back you'll give it to a member of your family another one will get it it goes around it goes you constantly getting ill and getting this chesty chesty problem it's to do with what they're putting in the air and they say themselves you know to do this 
they actually say there is an unknown risk to the environment right they're talking about it being an unknown risk to the environment what about us people what about humans what about the children yeah have they considered the effect the long-term effect on this because they've been doing it for years right they've been doing this for a while okay I only noticed it recently around my area and I've been here I've lived here for eight years and to be honest I've not noticed much spraying at all and I've, I look at the sky a lot people know I, I film UFOs around here and I've always enjoyed being outside in nature and I do love the sky um, but they started spraying heavily round here last year definitely beginning of last year um, and you know the statistics show the statistics on here show that it's been happening round here because this is just for my local health authority and if you lot could all do a freedom of information at yourselves and find out in your local area because what I was able to do with the statistics they sent me with these figures that they sent me what I was able to do was go back to the videos that I'd taken and I knew when there was heavy spraying in the area and I can just go to the statistics here and it shows when the spraying was heavy people were getting ill people were being admitted to hospital and if you've seen my whistleblower video and um, we're all aware that um, the ambulance man from that video he noticed he knew when they were spraying the stuff people were being admitted I've also heard there's a ca there's a, a cab driver um, and he has been taking a lot of children to hospital and people with breathing difficulties and he tells people in the cab that he thinks that's what it is now when we start saying that we think it's aerosol spraying or chemtrails people just look at you and think you're a nutcase but I want you guys to know that anybody who's noticed this shit going on fair play to you big ups to you because you actually noticed something was going on and this is what it was it was geoengineering all right it was that so when you see a plane going by and the plane is shooting that it's an atmospheric aerosol okay so I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been fighting this and noticing this and caring enough to do something about it and for me the fight has just begun because this is blatant proof and from now on nobody's gonna call me a conspiracy theorist because this is conspiracy this is fact okay it's factual geoengineering is a fact okay the only thing we don't know is what crap they're spraying down and what the end game to this is because I've heard a lot of stories and I don't know if you lot have heard about the whole um, transhumanism agenda and all that but um, I do believe there's something else in this and that's what we need to get to the bottom of um, but to all my fellow activists who've been out there and fighting this year respect to you and what we saw and what we noticed was true and they've been trying to make out that we're uh, we're crazy but we're not because we did notice something that's happening and I think that's why slowly slowly it's trickling into the uh, into the public arena because too many people are becoming aware of it so I'm gonna take this as a as a score for us yeah so it's one to the activists nil to the elite so thanks guys and keep fighting London heat wave leads to air quality concerns. High levels of ozone have been recorded in London, leading to fears that public health could be affected. According to the website Airtext, which monitors air quality levels in the capital, high readings of ozone were taken in areas of outer London today. However, air quality readings taken by DEFRA are yet to show any significant levels of ozone across the city. Ozone can be harmful to humans as the ozone molecule consists of three oxygen atoms bound together, making it a powerful oxidizing agent which could damage biological membranes including the lining of the lungs. Simon Burkett, founder of the Clean Air in London campaign, believes that the heat wave currently sweeping the capital is largely to blame for the high incidence of ozone being recorded. He said, it has been unusually hot for May and London is due to hit 28 or 29 degrees at some point today. Smog can be caused by a combination of the low level of wind and the sunshine. What is happening is that there are high levels of ozone in outer London not helped by sunshine beating down on the nitrogen dioxide from traffic pollution in inner London. Dr Christine McHugh, Assistant Director at Cambridge Environmental Research Consultants, which runs the Airtech service alongside London councils, 
explained that high ozone readings can be common at this time of year. She said, every spring it is not unusual to get readings of high ozone levels. In the heat, these can be caused by a photochemical reaction which brings the molecules down into the lower atmosphere. Some people can be affected, but higher readings have been taken elsewhere in Europe than in London. And according to Mr. Burkett, the high ozone levels are likely to be one reason why London Ambulance Service staff were called out 1,345 times on Tuesday, May the 22nd. The service's busiest weekday in history. Assistant Chief Ambulance Officer John Pooley confirmed that a large portion of these calls were from people suffering from chest pains and with breathing difficulty, which he attributed to the hot weather. Mr Burkett has hit out at the lack of publicity of the London's high ozone levels, claiming that DEFRA has broken assurances made in Parliament that it would publish details of any smog episodes occurring across the country. He said, There is no question people should be warned. Quite frankly, this is a massive public health failing by the government and the mayor. Both say that they want the public to be made more aware of the pollution, but they are going out of their way not to do so. I think they are avoiding the issue and trying to keep it out of the public eye. Speaking to Air Quality News, a spokesman for DEFRA said that as yet only moderate levels of ozone had been recorded across the capital by the government and any high ozone readings would be publicised immediately. She said, if there is an episode of smog, we would issue alerts in the form of an information bulletin, but we haven't reached high ozone levels yet. DEFRA would also issue a bulletin at the beginning of the smog season, although there is no legal requirement for us to do so. We have been monitoring stations across the country, which are updated throughout the day. Right guys, so you've just heard and I've just showed you the report that's online at the moment. It's on the Air Quality News website um, and they're, having cons they're, they're showing concerns about the quality of air that they're finding in London. Um, and just like my report and what I told you about already, there's a lot of people with breathing difficulties and people are being taken to hospital because they cannot breathe. Now the thing is, they're blaming this at the moment on the heat wave that we're having. The thing is, I'm going to tell you what I think it is. I think because we've not got much natural cloud at the moment, okay, and it is fairly quite, it's, it's quite clear skies, so the stuff they're spraying is getting down quicker. But they're, they're saying this smog is due to... Um, the heat wave that we're having and to me that just doesn't make sense and also what doesn't make sense to me is the statistics on this um, so the London Ambulance Service staff were called out 1,345 times on Tuesday just gone May the 22nd say that again yeah 1,345 times they were called out because people were having chest pains and breathing difficulties and they attributed it to the hot weather um, so I don't know about you guys, but when it gets really hot, I don't have breathing difficulties, really. You know, if you go to a country and they're not spraying and it's hot, it's fine and you can deal with it. You know, it's never, it's never affected my breathing. What's affected my breathing is the shit that they're spraying in the sky and they're trying to blame it on hot weather, which is to, it's, it's absolute crap, people. And the thing is, if, if you're going to have, in the capital alone, 1,345 people being called um, the ambulance, you know, taken to hospital, why has there not been a warning given to people in London? Why hasn't the mayor said anything about bad air quality? You know, I know we're, we're, due, we're coming up for the Olympics, maybe they don't want to scare people, but I'm telling you, if you come over here and you're coming over for the Olympics, then please do bring a mask with you, because you'll probably need it. Um, <laughs> and, and that's the honest truth. So if you're living in London, please really just be careful and take care of yourselves. If you do get any problems with your chest or your breathing, then I do suggest you do get yourself to a doctor. Um, another thing I wanted to show you quickly, this is a story from yesterday's Evening Standard. That's yesterday's Evening Standard. And I don't know if they're trying not to warn people, but this was a tiny, tiny little story. You see this bit here? Tiny, absolutely tiny bit of page it took. And that was a story in the Evening Standard. 
Um, Londoners were warned of the first big summer smog of the year as the ambulance services said it had seen an unprecedented rise in emergency calls for breathing, trouble and chest pains. Um, levels of harmful ozone and car exhaust particles had soared this week as temperatures headed towards 30 degrees. So they're trying to blame it on car exhaust and ozone. I'm blaming it on the shit that you're spraying in the air and there's not much live, there's not much proper God sent um, cloud coverage today. So it's coming down quicker and it's coming down harder and because the sun's shining it's probably making the nanoparticles affect our chests even more. And remember a line that I told you in this story, it actually says that it can affect the lining of the lungs, right? It says it here. Um, Ozone can be harmful. The, the molecules consist of three oxygen atoms bound together, making it a powerful oxidizing agent which can, which can damage biological membranes, including the lining of the lungs. Okay? Now, this is what can be possibly happen, happening to people in London and outside of London, but there's been no warning. They're not telling you to be careful or anything. So just, it's going to be a nice hot weekend. Just take your time outside. Be careful. Look after yourselves. And I'll speak to you soon. One love.